you remember two Fridays ago, I preached about uh, how close are you with God. And then I went back to James chapter 1, uh, and I fell in love with verse 1. Last week we, we preached about being a servant. What kind of a servant are we? And we learned three things about James. Uh, what is number one? James was, what kind of a servant was he? He was a what? He was an honored servant. You remember that? You still remember? He was an honored servant because God honored him by using him to write the book of James. And then secondly, we learned that James was a what? He was a humble servant. He just introduced himself and said, James, the servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. He did not say, James, the half-brother of Jesus. And then finally, we learned that James was a what? Helpful servant. Okay? A helpful servant. Uh, he tried to help those who were scattered abroad. And today we will continue with the, with the following verse. So turn to the book of James, chapter 1. And this will be a series, I guess. Next week we'll study verse number 5. Verse 1 down to verse number 4. All together, ready? Begin. My brethren, count it on joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith work in patience. But let patience of a perfect work, that we may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. The title of the message this morning is, Turning trials into triumphs. Turning trials into triumphs. This is a this is a challenge for every single Christian. That when trials comes to us, the challenge is for us to turn our trials into triumphs. Loving Heavenly Father, we come before Thee again to ask You, Lord, to bless us and to help us, dear Holy Spirit. Please help us understand God's word today. Lord, we all go through trials in life. And Lord, I pray that today we will be able to uh, understand and digest the message, Lord, that you want us to hear about this subject. Your Holy Spirit, please speak to our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much. You may be seated. Now in our text, it was uh, Ati Binaza. James speaks about trials. Uh, the word temptation in verse number 2, the Bible says, My brother, count it all joy when you fall into what? Diverse temptations. The word temptation uh, here is talking about trials. It's talking about sufferings. It's not talking about uh, seduction. Now, beginning with verse 2 down to verse number 4, the Bible gives us some of the most enlightening and most encouraging words for those who are experiencing trial. I am sure habang natuguhan this morning, I am sure uh, you probably have some trials that you are going through right now. There are three kinds of people in this room. One are people who just came out of trial. That's the first group. Meron sa inyo rito, nandito kayo, maring wala kayong problema ngayon, pero kadagaling nyo sa problema. Kadagaling nyo sa pagsubok. So you are out of the trial. But some of you are in the middle of a trial right now. Okay? Uh, it might be about finances, it might be about your work, it might be about your family, it might be about your relationship, it, ha maybe it has something to do with, uh, with relationship or, or health. But some of you are having a trial or you are going through some sufferings right now. And if you are not in that group, maybe you are in the next group. You are the person who probably are not facing trials or sufferings right now. But there is a trial that awaits you. May nag-aantay na pagsubok or suffering maybe tomorrow or next week or next month. And these verses na binasa natin dito, as I had mentioned earlier, gives us some of the most enlightening and most encouraging words if you go through trials in life. Now, this is not in your notes. 
oftentimes our trials, they will either make you a better Christian or a bitter Christian. Have you known Christians before na nagkaroon sila ng pagsubok in their life and because of their trial in life, they became bitter against God? I have known people like that. People who have become bitter against God, they questioned God and said, Lord, why me? Lord, why did you, maybe somebody died in the family and they would question God and say, Lord, why did, why did you take my, uh, my child or a, a person that's very dear to you? And so, uh, their trials have made them bitter against God. You don't see them in church anymore. Why? Because of their bitterness towards God. But some Christians had become, become, they became better Christians because of their trials. See, it all depends on how we handle the trials or the sufferings that we have in life. That's why we need to go to the Bible and learn what the Bible is telling us, what the Bible is teaching us. What should we do when trials come? How can we turn these uh, trials into triumphs? Instead of becoming bitter against God, at the end of our trials, we will become better Christians. Three things. Number one, number one is the outbreak of trials. The outbreak of trials. Verse number two. The Bible says, My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptation. Underline the word when. The Bible did not say, Brethren, count it all joy if. Hindi po if ang ginamit dyan. So it's not, the question is not, will you be having trials? That's not the question. We will have trials. The question is, when? Now one of the things that James tells us is that trials are certain. Trials are to be expected in life. Now, Peter tells us, in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse number 12, turn there for a while, 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse number 12 Peter said this ito siya nasabi ni Apostle Peter dito sabi niya, Beloved he is talking to Christians he said, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you what does he mean? he is saying, do not be surprised do not be surprised think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. So, we should expect trials. Kasi kung alam mo na parating ang trial, alam mo parating yan, mapaghahandaan mo, di ba? It's like in the Philippines, we have pag-asa. They forecast uh, if a storm is coming. And so, if you don't have the forecast, you are not ready, and all of a sudden, a storm will, will hit, and then, uh, then it will cause so much devastation. So, we should expect it. And here's another thing about trials. Trials can also come suddenly. It can come suddenly. Luke, Luke chapter 10, verse number 30. Let's go there for a while. Look at this story here. We have a classic illustration dito. Nang isang tao na dumating yung pagsubok sa kanyang buwan. Luke chapter 10. And verse number 30. We can learn our lessons from this, uh, from this story here. Luke chapter 10 and verse number 13. Now it came to pass as they went. I'm sorry. I'm reading verse number 30. Verse number 30. And Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from, where? From? Jerusalem, Jerusalem to Jericho. Jericho. Did he have a problem at that point? Was he suffering at that point? No. no. He probably prepared his beast. It's like, Today it would be like a car. He put his things in his beast, in his uh, in his vehicle, and his plan was to go to where? To go to Jericho from Jerusalem. That is 46 miles drive, 12, 46 kilometers away. That was his plan. Well, the Bible says here in verse number 30, and fell among thieves. Do you notice the word fell? That is the same word that was used in James chapter 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you, or when you fall into diverse temptations. The same word. The Bible tells us here that he fell among thieves which tripped him of his raiment. They took all his belongings. They wounded him. 
and departed and leaving him half dead. All of a sudden he had, uh, at first he had no, uh, he was feeling well, he was feeling okay. He had his riches and he was traveling. I don't know he was what he was thinking during his travel. He was probably thinking about what he is going to do when he gets there. But all of a sudden, trouble came. And then they took everything he had and they even uh, tried to kill him. And instead of going to her, instead of going to Jericho, he ended up in, in, in somewhere. It's like, Halimbawa, you're in Doha and so you're going to, uh, to Alcor to work. That's your plan. You have no illness, you are feeling good, you have your car, and so your plan is, I'm going to work. But something happened in the road and you ended up at Hamad Hospital. See? The same is true with Job. If you read the story of Job, in Job chapter 1, he was a wealthy man, everything was well. His kids were all well. He had so much riches. And all of a sudden, if you read verse 14, one problem came and another problem came and another problem came and another problem came. Trials can come suddenly. Now, James used the word here, if you go back to the book of James, he used the word diverse. Do you notice that? He said, my brother, count it on joy when you fall into what? Diverse. That word diverse means manifold. That means various temptations, various sufferings, various trials. The word is used to describe our trials. We can have financial trials, you can have physical trials, you, have, you can have vocational or uh, trial regarding your work or even spiritual trial or domestic trials. Now there are two basic reasons why we suffer. Listen to this. Sometimes we suffer as a result of correction. Do you understand that? Do you understand that? We suffer because of correction. We are doing something that's wrong and so God uh, sends some trial in our life to correct us. Or maybe we are suffering because of perfection. The trials of correction come when we are out of God's will and God uses these trials to bring us back to Him. And the trials of perfection come when we are in the will of God and God uses trials to make us more like the Lord Jesus Christ. So the first thing that we need to understand is the outbreak of trials. It will come to us. You have to pray for it. You have to say, don't just wait for trials. Ang mahirap kasi minsan, kapag wala pa yung trials, we do not pray for it. Dapat ang gawin natin, habang wala pa yun, mag-pray ka na, mag-prepare ka na, maghanda ka na yung prayer and say, Lord, I know that trials will come to my life. Lord, I praise you and thank you because I know you will not give me a trial that I cannot bear. And Lord, if I cannot bear the trial, I know you, are with, you will be there to bear the trial for me. Lord, when I come to trials, Lord, please help me. Give me the wisdom. Give me the strength to be able to withstand those trials. Amen? Amen. So you will really prepare for those trials because you know it's, it's going to come. And the second thing that I wanted to say, not only the, the outbreak of trials, but secondly, the outcome of trials. The outcome of trials. In verse number 3, the Bible says, Knowing this, that the trying, the word trying here, it speaks of, perf of uh, purging effects. That the trying of your faith will get what? Patience. But let patience have her perfect work. Now, the second thing that I want you to realize, number one is, trials will come. You can mark that down. And the second thing I want you to realize that God always has a purpose in the trials that come our way. Palaging may purpose ang Panginoon dyan. Palaging may reason ang Panginoon. Palaging may dahilan ang Panginoon. God has a reason, good reason, for sending those trials in our life. Amen? He has a reason. Ano yung mga reasons dito? Trials produce spiritual purity. It produces personal purity. Again, the word that was used here in verse number 3, the word used was trying. It speaks of the purging effect of trials. Now, the picture behind the word is that of precious metals. 
Habis ini nak boro Aku saya lo malu bulan Dia lo bulan Kalau lo ngur Lo kan ilung busan binangun Oh Or you must screw drivers, what do they do? Apa yang yang ginagawa yan? What do they do with it? Those metals are heated in order to to remove the impurities. And the same is true in order that God is sending trials for spiritual to produce spiritual purity. God sends trials to produce spiritual stability. Verse number 3. The Bible says our trials were contentions. The word patience it speaks of perseverance. That means God is making us strong. Amen? Yeah. Do you want to become a strong Christian? Yeah. Wow. I want to become a strong Christian. What is Brother Cyrus? Brother Cyrus, would you stand? Tumayo ka lang, Brad. Sige lang. I just want... I was thinking about you when I was making this sermon. Would you stand, Brother Cyrus? Look at him. Look at him. Okay? Kung hindi ako nagpastor, mas maraming pangkatawang ko dyan eh. Let me stand in, Brother Cyrus. Let me stand in. Let me stand in. Now, Brother Richard, you stand. Okay. Now, you compare his muscles to Brother Cyrus. Now, do you think that happened by accident? I have never asked him, but I'm sure. Brad, pumupunta ka sa gym, di ba? Okay. Nag-gym yan. See? See? When you go to the gym, is it easy? No. It's hard. You have to lift those weights. It's very hard, but you keep lifting those weights. And as you lift those weights, your muscles are developed. I'm also exercising, but the problem is it's my stomach that's getting bigger. Okay? Because what I'm exercising is my job, just like many of you. You know, exercise not in it. I'm not in it. And so instead of building your muscles, you are building your stomachs. Amen. Amen. See? He becomes very strong. And the Bible tells us in Ephesians 6.10, the Bible says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Well, how do we become strong? Through trials. Trials are the divine gymnasium whereby we develop our spiritual muscles. Trials also produces not only spiritual purity, it produces spiritual stability or strength, they also produce spiritual maturity. Look at the Bible in verse number 4. But let patience have her what? Perfect work. The word perfect means complete. It means full grown. It means, uh, uh, it means uh, mature. You know, the Lord does not want the believer to be to be lacking uh, but complete and living a full Christian life. Ayaw na pa yung dwarf ng mga Christians. God wants us to grow. Amen? Amen? He wants us to mature. And so God sends trials in our life not to harm us but to help us. Not to destroy us but to develop us. One, we should expect trials. Second is that we should understand that God sends trials for a purpose. So when you have trials, please do not despise it. You may not understand what God is doing in your life, but God is doing something. God is doing something. And number three, the last, is the outlook for trials. When I say outlook, how do you view trials? What is your attitude towards trials? Now James tells us that trials can be expected and that they always have a purpose. We understand that point number one and point number two. But what he is saying here in point number three, James tells us how to look at our trials, how we should view our trials. Paano natin tignan yung ating mga pagsulog na dumarating sa ating buhay? What should our common attitude concerning trials? Kung hindi tayo mag-ingat, we despise trials. Amen? We hate trials. We, when trials comes, we want it removed immediately. You know, gusto natin eh, kung meron tayong pagsubo, we pray, Lord, please help me. That's our prayer immediately. Look at your Bible in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Look at this. Tignan nyo si Apostle Paul. Paul was a spiritual giant. Chapter 12. 
of second thirty. This is starts with verse number one. He said, um, "Let me just start with uh, yeah. Let's start with verse number one." He is saying, "It is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory." Yung magmamayabang. Siya sabi niya, wala akong kar karapatang magmayabang. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. You know, the Apostle Paul had revelations. Had, meron siyang mga... Um, I think the Apostle Paul died. I'm not dogmatic about this, but if you remember the incident where he was stoned in Lystra, and they dragged him out of the city, thinking he was dead, and all of a sudden, he tumayo siya, and then he went and he was preaching again. I thought he was, uh, I thought he died, at the, I'm not dogmatic about that. But I think he's talking about that experience in this chapter. This is what he said. I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago, that was himself, whether in the body, I cannot tell, or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God know what. Such a one was caught up into the third heaven. Can you imagine that? Kung kayo kayang dinala ng Panginoon sa third heaven, nakapunta kayo doon, would you be proud about it? Ah, people will be proud. Punta nga lang ng Amerika. Very proud ka, di ba? Well, the Lord took him to the third heaven and he said, And I knew such a man whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell God no one. How that he was caught up into the body, into paradise, and heard and speakable words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. Verse 5. Of such an one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but my infirmities. To make the long story short, all have every reason to be proud. Matalimong tao ito. If you study the life of the Apostle Paul. And so, so that he will not be proud, anong ginawa ng Panginoon? Look at your Bible in verse 7. And lest I should be exalted above, uh, above measure through the abundance of revelations that was given unto me a thorn in the flesh. God gave him a trial. God gave him a thorn in the flesh. The messenger of Satan to buffet me lest I should be exalted above measure. What did he do? And he said in verse 8, For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. He said, Lord, please remove this thorn in my flesh. Hindi natin alam kung ano exactly yung kanyang thorn in the flesh. Some people say it has something to do with his eyes. You know, his experience nung nabulag siya on his way to Damascus and he was blind for three days and after three days nung pinunta siya ng Aeneas there came parang mga scales that came off of his eyes and so some things it has probably something to do with his eyes but we are not very sure about that but he said I, I besought the Lord thrice he begged God is there something in your life you want to be removed maybe you are sick and you say Lord Pagalingin nyo naman ako. Lord, please heal me. Lord, I want to be healed. Maybe you have some problem in your life and you want the Lord to take it away from you. Verse number 9, what did God do? And He said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. For, thy, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. God, the Lord said, Oh, I am not going to take that away. But I do this. Are you listening now? God said, I'm not going to take your thorn in the flesh, but I will give you grace. It's like He will not take away your load, but He will give you the strength to be able to carry that load. Amen. And look at the attitude of the Apostle Paul. What did he say? Verse number 9. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities. Do you see the change in his attitude? That the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore I take pleasure. Look at this, verse 10. What did he say? Therefore I take pleasure. Now I am enjoying my infirmities. In reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distress. He hated these things before. He wanted these things to be removed in his life before. But when God said, Paul, oh, my grace is sufficient for thee. And he said, Therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities. Verse number 9, and I will very, uh, he used that word gladly again here. See? God has a purpose. God has a purpose for our trials. 
He went down, go back to the book of James, and began in just a little while. Look at verse number 2 again. He said, My brethren, count it all joy. And we can say, no. The word count means to think ahead. It means to look forward. Do you see the point? Our joy comes from looking ahead at the end result. Halimbawa, kung sa tingin mo after lifting weights for several months or years, you will have that the body like katawan ni Brother Cyrus. Okay? That will give you joy. I will become like him. Okay? You are, you are looking forward to the result. And because you look forward to the result, now you can rejoice. We can count it all joy because we know that when it is said and done, the result will be worth it. Kasi pag binigyan tayo ng Panginoon ng pagsubok, that means that God will use us. Amen? Yeah. God will use us. God will use us. I remember that verse that says, uh, Can the rust grow without the mire? Do you know rush? Are you as AIDS? That means bull rush. Do you know what a bull rush is? A bull rush is an Egyptian plant. It grows up to 18 feet tall. They use that for to make ropes. They use that to make boats. Do you remember when Moses was born? Anong ginawa ng mother niya? Nilagay siya sa basket that was made of bull rush. They make shoes out of it. Yung mga bull rushes na yan, they make boats out of it. They make, uh, what else? Ropes, boats, they make, uh, shoes. Ginagamit nila yan. But it grows up to 18 feet tall. But the question in the verse is, can the rust grow without the mire? Can the bull rust grow without the mire? The answer is, no. That means the thinner the mire, the shorter the bull rust is. But the thicker the mire, the taller the bull rust becomes. And the taller it becomes, the more useful it becomes. And that is exactly what God is doing in our life. God is putting us in the mire so we will grow. And once we have grown, we become useful for His glory. All of us will go through times of trials, whether we love the Lord or not. And these trials will either build us or break us. That's why we need to be careful. It all depends on how we handle those trials. I put this in your notes, but uh, let me just read this. I once read about the roses taken from the uh, Balkan mountains. This is in Bulgaria. May mga, may mga bulaklak doon, may mga rosas doon. Na. They produce some of the world's finest perfume. Do you love perfumes? Amen. Do you love perfumes? Yeah. I love perfumes. Uh, what's your perfume, Brother Jam? I'm praying for G or money. Okay. <laughs> we have perfumes. Okay. There's nothing wrong with perfumes. They produce some of the world's finest perfume. But in order to get that lovely fragrance, the workers must gather the roses in the darkest part of the night. You don't secret to The workers would beat those flowers starting shortly after midnight. Sabi na natin alas 12. Uh, and end within 2 hours, dalawang oras lang. Yung talagang pinakamadilim na time ng gabi. And the brevity of the work period is based on scientific tests that show that during this interval, the blossom gives their most pleasant, pleasing scent. 40% of the aroma fades with the coming of the day. Doon pala nila kinukuha yung napakabangong perfume. And the lesson is, we will face dark times in life. Amen? Amen? But we must never forget that if we want to experience the sweetest aroma of being used of God, the dark times in life are necessary. Look at your Bible in 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 7. The Bible says that the trial of your faith, yung pagsubok ng inyong pananampalataya, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, 
might be found what? unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 10. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 10 the Bible says, But the God of all grace who hath called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after he have suffered a while. Do you see that? Our suffering is not forever. After we have suffered a while. So when you are suffering, itanim mo sa isip mo, ah, panandalian lang ito. I will not be here forever. After you have suffered a while, what? Make you what? Perfect. That means mature. What else? Established. That means strong. Strengthen and set in you. And what is the result? Verse number 11. To Him be glory. The Lord will be honored in your life. Why? Because of the trials that He allowed to come to your life. Let me remind you again that trials will come. And when they do come, realize that God has a purpose. And so we should view our trials not something that will harm us. But God is allowing those trials to come to our life to help us. Not to destroy us, but to develop us into better servants of the Lord. Love you, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the message Lord, that you have given us today. Lord, help us to remember these three things. The trials will come. Therefore, we should prepare for it. But when they do come, help us to understand that they have a purpose. You have a reason for sending those trials to us. And we should never view those trials as a foe. Instead, we should view those trials as a friend. Because they make us a better person. They make us a better Christian. And more effective in the world. Bless the invitation in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bow your head, close your eyes, no one looking around.